from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live here in London for HPE Discover. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Bill Mantle, VP and GM of HPE Enterprise, the HPC. Welcome to the Cube. And Thank you. Erwan Bernard, President and CEO of Scality. Welcome back, good, good to, to see you see again. You. Absolutely, good so, to see you. So, the fruits of the labor of the relationship have been very positive. We've heard some great hallway buzz between yep. the relationship between the HP and Scality. Uh, so congratulations everyone, we appreciate the, the time. Yep. So give us the update, what's going on? You guys are going to market together for a while. Mm -hmm. um, how long has it been since the launch? Any stats you can share? So the relationship started a few years ago, actually started in Europe, and we now have more than 75 petabytes uh, across several dozens of customers around the globe. But there was definitely an acceleration as we had a more formal partnership a year ago with HP servers in order to propose object storage in a software on uh, industry standard servers fashion. And uh, this week, uh, HP Storage has also uh, formally embraced uh, the solution to complement the uh, three-part portfolio which excels at performance-driven, latency-driven storage, kind of a tier one of storage, complementing it with a capacity-driven storage solution made of Scality software running on the Apollo servers of HP. Bill, talk about the, um, the growth opportunities because we've been hearing this with the three part and overall HP storage line, store one all across the board, mm -hmm. is that the seamless features that scale across a single architecture. Yes. And that's not just HP, that's also partners. This is one example. Yeah, that's um, correct. Give us some color into this opportunity from an innovation standpoint and the benefits of the customer. Sure, so what we're seeing is more and more that the amount of data coming down, so this big data problem is, is uh, challenging traditional storage architectures. And so the, the concept of object store, which started in a lot of the big service providers, is now starting to come down to to a lower level, so it went from the cloud service providers into some of the telcos, and now we're actually seeing enterprises that are needing a place to store all this data in a very fast, but at the same time, efficient way uh, to get to it. Um, I should say, a very, very large and efficient way to get to it. And so, that's what's driving this, uh, this demand for object storage. Right, and so, this, we've talked about object forever, right? And you know, you've seen it in, in certain niches, like photo sharing and things like that. Obviously, you see it in the public cloud. And now, finally, it's really starting to take hold. What's going on in the marketplace that people have reached this epiphany of, okay, it's so much easier, so much simpler, it scales better, you know, put, get. This is an easier sort of mental model. But talk about sort of the, the maturity of object store. I think it's a, it's a couple of things. One, uh, object is a technology, that's only what it is. And the adoption depends not only on the technology itself, but what's around it. So it started with people who control the application stack 100%, could write the application natively in object, big, webs big websites, for example. Mm -hmm. And that, that's going to take time for every application in the in enterprise to speak object natively. So that's one aspect of the adoption curve. The way you work around that is to complement a native object store engine with a scale-out file system, which we did at Scality. So you don't need a gateway. You can present as NFS, as SIFS, and in the orange world, in the object world, you can present as S3, as Swift, native REST, and so on and so forth. So that's point number one. Present the proper interfaces, take into account what the application really is, and give access to a legacy application, uh, give them access to the benefits of object. Point number two, I think a key in adoption of object is to apply the recipe of the web giants to the enterprise meaning software on industry standard hardware. And that, that's where the Apollo range of HP servers is, is magic, because this 4U60 drive dense form factor is a perfect block for a scale out architecture of that kind. Those servers, by the way, were not born for object store, they were born for big data, but they happen to do a magnificent job on a workload like object. And those servers are now available, and they're available not only to the big web scale guys, but to enterprise customers. So combine those two things, and that's where you get the adoption to, to start raising. And that was presumably the appeal, Bill, of the relationship. What, what specific problem were you trying to solve where you sort of stumbled into scaling and said, hmm, this might fit? Well, it's uh, again the demand for customers to be able to store all that big data that's coming down. And certainly, as we've talked about, 
we've been selling servers into the service providers for a while in exactly this type of application. And so with the Apollo line, we actually brought what was largely a very custom engagement with service providers down into a portfolio so that now more standard customers in the commercial enterprises and so forth can now enjoy the same levels of density, the same levels of cost uh, value that they have in that. And so that's, that's been a major change that we're seeing in the marketplace. In the big data context, so what's happening in the HPC world? Is it, is it sort of the traditional HPC stuff that they're just now calling big data because it's always been big? People say you know, big data, big, big deal in yep. your world. Uh, or is it sort of things like Hadoop and new frameworks coming into the HPC world. I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit. Sure, well, it, it's probably both from that standpoint. So there's always been a lot of big data in high performance compute workloads. Now what we're seeing is that that data becomes more valuable and more accessible than it used to be. And certainly with object storage over more traditional sort of tape siloed based infrastructures where it takes a fair amount of finite time to actually get to that data. Now, if you will, a lot of the data is on, at your fingertips for you to access. And what it does allow you to do is run more of what they call ensembles in the industry. In other words, you can take a large data sets over a period of time and run some of the typical type data analytics on top of them and get actually more value out of it. So uh, a great example is we do have a customer that's done this in the, uh, the uh, it's a jet engine manufacturer and they've actually looked at, they run lots and lots of runs uh, for some of their, their engineering analysis and then they use analytics to understand the difference between the runs. So you're actually starting to see that interesting blend of traditional modeling and simulation, which is high performance computing, and then on top of that, bringing in data analytics to sort of understand the data you have. And now, because of the power of high performance computing, you can afford to run hundreds to thousands of different runs on that, and then, you know, again, look at it from an analytics perspective. So this has really changed the science from that standpoint. So, guys, Tease, tease the conversation and, and let's connect the dots to the big announcement around sure. composable and synergy. I mean, everything's kind of fitting in like a gloves. Conversion infrastructure, hyper, hyper converge, you got object, you got flash, all this stuff's kind of really kind of, there's a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, absolutely. For you guys to even keep up with. Yep. Never mind the customers, right? Yep. So, so they have to figure it out. So mm -hmm. what's the, how do you guys tie into this composable? Because I almost imagine with that kind of scale, this is a cloud native kind of concept, scale up, scale out I mean, on industry standard hardware is some benefits. The developer's going to take advantage of that. So we're seeing this composable message. Where does this fit in? What's your story with respect to that? Is, is there a fit? How do you guys talk about that? I think it's about bringing to the enterprise in shape of productized software and hardware the same secret sauce as the, as the web giants. And so from that standpoint, you get in access to this large pool of storage where you can do HPC archive, where you can do big data analytics archive, where you can uh, store any sort of large amounts of data you want to come back to afterwards, and you do it controlling that on premise, just like if you were uh, yourself a Google or an Amazon. That's, that's kind of the contribution we're making to the, to the whole story. So and, giving and, them, and giving them that, the data fast. But you, and, and you, uh, sorry John, but so you do that a little differently by bringing an appliance model to the table, is that right? Or? So it's a, it's a software that runs on standard Linux, that runs yeah. on, on standard servers. We just happened, the two of us, to have a really good combination, because the Apollo range of servers was there early on the market and kept its edge in terms of form factor, economics, performance, and so we, we happened to leverage the Apollo a lot for that leadership position reason. So technically, it's a software running on Linux, running on hardware. It's really a software-defined conversation. But from a customer standpoint, by joining forces, we can deliver that as a very well, easy just, uh, appliance. It, it closes that gap Absolutely. between, you know, I want to be like that, but where do I put it? Exactly. <laughs> yep. Okay. And, Sorry, John. And, and at the same time, the, all of the uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise portfolio is, is, um, is developed around the, the RESTful interfaces and these sorts of things. So they can all work together, you can manage them with a similar set of interfaces, so they'll all work together. So uh, Apollo platforms that are working in the midst of our Synergy platform, these all will work together with a similar, we all have ILO throughout, so it allows us to manage it in a very similar way. So you can bring in, you can have a, a composable infrastructure and then have object storage as the, as the object storage piece of that as well, and it all works together from that perspective. 
Where are the big use cases from the object store you guys are seeing? I mean, we know the ones that are out there. Now, unstructured data is a good one. Was there other ones that you guys are seeing emerging? So, Any new information on how customers are using object? So the, the core use case remains Active Archive. So whatever organization who has a lot of research data or, or business data to store somewhere, behind big, big data analytics, behind an HPC cluster, IoT. or behind a, a regular, yeah. So, so that's the archival use case. And, uh, and that's probably still you know, half of the, the market. What is emerging and very interesting as well is uh, more active and performance driven services, video streaming. I mean, HP and Scality are helping RTL, a very big uh, media group in Germany, uh, to do video on demand. Yeah. And from that yeah. sole single storage pool, you can ingest and you can distribute your content, yeah. which conventionally you were using several storage systems to do. Yeah. So think, yeah. of that, think of that as a really deep um, storage pool that can accommodate a mixed set of workloads. Um, I think that's interesting. We saw each other the other night at the storage party downtown London, and you said, oh, we got to get SiliconANGLE the cube on, uh, on Scality. Um, you know, all kidding aside, this is a future move, collaboration, mm -hmm. video is the number one app. You look at Absolutely. consumer, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, yep. I and mean, Facebook serving up billions, competing now with YouTube, but that will roll right into the, the business. Video on demand, Absolutely. all aspects. Mm -hmm. so, so interesting trend that. Oh, Bill was mentioning that this, this started with service provider and goes to enterprise. Media are the first to pick it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen that with a lot of joint success in the US, in Europe. And then everybody who needs a lot of video is, in, is facing the same Where's challenge. Everybody? We have a car manufacturer <laughs> we're serving together, yeah. a European one, who's storing seven petabytes of video crash test data on our kind of system instead of a legacy storage. Why? Because scale, need for performance, need yeah. for future-proof architecture. They are not video experts, but video is coming to their business a yeah. big way and, and pushing the They envelope. want simplification, they want scale. Absolutely. They but but have it, 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 it's got to say it, it's less expensive too. I mean, it is. Absolutely. I mean, sometimes you guys yeah. don't like to talk about that, but it's way less expensive. No, no, it's, yeah. it's cloud economy for the enterprise. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right guys, final question. What's your take on the show? You guys have been working together for a year, tightly in a formal relationship. Um, the split is over, congratulations. Oh, a yep, lot of people excited. You. What is the thoughts, we'll start with Scality, the, the new HP, your thoughts? Well, I think the, what I like in the HP Enterprise for our own business is that we're coming from service provider going to enterprise and this week was full of enterprise customers. People who are in bank, in insurance, in media, in auto car manufacturing and are facing scale challenges with storage and we're glad that the HP yeah. team are bringing these people to us and we're, we're proposing yeah. the solution. And Docker, who was just on theCUBE earlier, they're yeah. having the same experience. HP's very partner friendly, Absolutely. They always have been. So Absolutely, and this good... focus on enterprise is, is just really the right thing right now. Bill, your thoughts, obviously people are pretty happy at HP, feeling uh, in the groove right now. Philly. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So, so we've had a great show, it's our biggest discovery yet in terms of attendance, so it's, it's a great coming out party for the new Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And folks are excited in terms of our new direction and in the solution space and a lot of these other, other interesting markets such as IoT, so there's a lot of buzz that we're fresh. moving forward, and so it's been all very positive yeah. from that. I standpoint. gotta say, I'm very impressed, fresh and relevant. Yep, you know, that's interesting. Really. And Split you got some cool factors going on, you got Scale of the Year, mm -hmm. and you got Docker, I mean, yep. you got a lot of cool stuff and, going and on. Split the company too, and more people show up. <laughs> 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 gotta love it. <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, thanks for sharing your insight, Thank you. we oh, appreciate it. We're here live at HPE Discover, HP Enterprise, this is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with more after this short break. Thank you.